me, Lord, whatever it takes. I don't know about you, but whatever it takes for me to get to Jesus, that's what I'm going to do. Come on, put your hands experience and I'm your host Bishop Tavis Grant and I want to thank you for one more time. We used to have a song in the church that one more time, one more time, one more time to give the Lord some praise and it is a great season. It's a great time to be alive. It's always better when we get together and I want to thank you so very, very much. You know, in this series Gifted for the Grind, I've had so many of you reach back out to me and said, Bishop, can I have some more of that? And so I don't want to waste a lot of time. I want to get right into the teaching today. I want to thank so many of you who have signed up to help us with our outreach efforts during this holiday season. We're giving away, giving away, giving away, and giving away. You want to be a part of the greatest giving movement uh, known. Uh, in, in, and listen, we're doing it, and we're doing it in a big way. Go to Bishop Tavis Grant too. Dot org and get more information and follow us on all the social Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And guess what? I answer back to people so you can inbox me. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter and I'll holler back. I want you to tell somebody, text somebody and tag. This is the greater experience and God wants you to live your best blessed life. You know, We've started a 40-day journey from December 1st to January 9th, a quest, a journey, a quest to live our best blessed life, a quest to live our best blessed life. You know, James Russell Lowell says this, and I love uh, when, when I just run across something, I want to share it with you. I want to deposit it into you. I want you to tell somebody. I want you to text somebody right quick and tell them, I'm getting ready to hear something that's going to change my life. I'm getting ready to hear something transformative. 
uh, I'm getting ready to become engaged with something that is going to make sure I'm never the same in Jesus' name. James Russell Lowell says there are two kinds of weakness, uh, one that bends and one that breaks. And the enemy is, you know, the, the, within the culture right now, there is, there, is, there is no middle ground. Either you bend or you break. And one of the things I love about the first psalm of the psalms, psalm number one, and he, and it means she, and he or she shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall bring forth fruit in, in, its, in its season, in its due season. And, and, and there's so many of you who are gifted for the grind, but you've been under an enormous amount of pressure. You've endured a great deal of pain and you've been caught up in a great, a, 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 a great amount of perplexity, almost paralyzing you. And yet God has seen fit to give us the opportunity to say one more time, one more day, one more hour, one more moment, one more time to get up. And God uses these moments to strengthen us with flexibility and pliability that we're able to apply principles and precepts in our lives that we're not ruled by the problem we're not ruled by the problem. The problem is ruled by us. And so one of the challenges is in, in, in this season, and I want to be very personal. I want to be very intentional. I want to be very intimate with you as I, as I impart this word into you today. One of the things that we have to do is we have to beware of the, the spirit of weariness, the spirit of weakness. Because this is an age now where, where uh, the, he wants to sift you. He wants to wear you down, wants to wear you out, wants to wear you through and through. And, 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 and this age is where, uh, this age is up that if you want to stand out, if you want to speak up, if you want to be unusual, if you want to be the exception to the rule, there are people who are agents of weakness, agents of weariness, whose sole purpose it is to, to, I mean, to steal the very energy of God out of your spirit. Yeah. You can't be unequally yoked because light and darkness cannot dwell together. It's important as a believer, as a child of God, that we break free from the tendencies of being connected to wearisome and weak people. Oh, Bishop Grant, I love the story of Gideon where God narrows down that army down to 300 men. I would rather go with the few and fight than go with the many and lose. And God teaches us over and over again, one of us can chase a thousand, but two of us, 10,000. Any two or three gather together in my name. Touching and agreeing, I will be in the midst of them. You see, faith is not in numbers. Faith is in the people who create the numbers. I ran across this the other day. Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. God is trying to expand the boundaries and margins of your mind. So that you can start handling larger concepts of the supernatural. So that you can handle a, a, a bigger, brighter, more bold, more beautiful vision than you've ever seen and or encountered. 
This is why it's so magnificent when Jesus starts weeping when he looks over the city of Jerusalem, the region of Jerusalem. And he says these words, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And what he was saying was he was looking at all of the opportunities, all of the advantages. We're talking about gifted for the grind. All of the predestined moments that were being wasted by people who didn't even have the mental capacity to see this is our time, this is our turn, and this is our season. And it caused him to weep to see so few people who could see this is the season for change. This is the season for transformation. This is the season for renewal. <clears throat> this is the season for regeneration. Now you are, you are, you are, you are. Take a moment, and give God praise that you're receiving a word like this because you don't have to wait until the battle is over. God's getting ready to give you the victory right now. I was reading the other day Jeremiah chapter 12, and it's one of my. You know, it, it, this is this is this is gonna you know you need to put your seatbelt on because this is, this is gonna be a rough ride. Listen to what Jeremiah knew. Now Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah had attitude issues. Jeremiah had attitude issues. He did. He did. He was so angry, he said it was like fire shut up in my bone. He may have even had anger management. He may have needed therapy or counseling. But listen to what it said in Jeremiah chapter 12. If you have run with the footmen and they have tired you, how can you compete with horses? And if you fall down in the land of peace, how will you do in the greatness or the vastness of Jordan? I mean, if you, if you quit now, if you resign now, if you pull over now, if you throw in the towel now, you don't you have a right to celebrate a new year because you've disqualified yourself. If, if, you, if you can't finish strong, if you can't finish on top, if you can't finish ahead, if you, can't, if you don't have the strength to, 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 to finish the race, you don't understand. With God, with God, God blesses finishers, not quitters. Oh my gosh. If you cannot keep your mind during times like these. Because let me help you with something. Prosperity brings challenges. Success brings challenges. Progress brings challenges. I'm, 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 I'm talking to pastors right now whose congregations are about to multiply 10 times. And if you can't manage the group you have right now, how can you manage two or three services on Sunday, two or three services during the week, and you can't manage a choir rehearsal? If you don't have the spiritual tenacity in being gifted for the grind to deal with what God has given you now, why would he give you more? It would be a mockery. It would be a fraud for God to give you more and you can't handle what you have right now. So I want to give you a quiz. I want you to answer several questions. Number one, will you allow yourself to be held back this time? Number two, will you let the increasingly average lifestyle of the culture be forced upon you because you, you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to listen to this by this this bible encounter you have to be a part of this you could be doing something else you could be doing what other broke people are doing you could be doing what other depressed and discouraged and defeated people are doing you don't have to do this you could be doing something else you could be doing something else that people who don't have something else do which is nothing question number three Will you cease to be another mindless, 
lifeless, hopeless individual who simply reacts but doesn't know how to be a proactive person. You're a reactive person, but you don't know how to be a proactive person. The only way to break free from the self-devouring cycles is to aggressively choose to go forward no matter what. That's the only way you do it. Child of God, that's the only way you do it. Man of God, woman of God, you got to be determined to go forward. I don't have a backwards gear. I don't have a sidewards gear. I don't have a stopping gear. I only have one gear forward. And you must constantly, consciously, forcefully dominate life until you find a way out. And if you can't find a way out, I'm getting ready to tell you something. And you're going to owe me some money. <laughs> you go, I'm going to send you a bill. You create a way out. You can't find a way out. You got to create a way out. You got to produce a way out. Better yet, you got to fight your way out. God has a propensity. He is drawn almost like a magnet to people who refuse to give up, give in, and or give out. And then there are those of you who get on my last nerve because you're always trying to wait for the right moment. You can't wait for a perfect set of circumstances because they don't exist. You can't wait for somebody else to give you approval. You can't wait for somebody to tell you it's okay. Average people have wishes and hopes. Confident people have goals and plans. Average people have wishes and hope. I wish, I hope, I wish, I wish, I, I wish, I hope. I'm going to wish and hope. I'm going to get my mask. I'm going to wish and hope. I'm going to get a house. I'm going to wish and hope. I'm going to get a man, a mansion, a million dollars. No, confident people have goals and plans. In this will I be confident. You have to confess it to possess it. Woo! I love it, I love it, I love it. Bishop Grant, pat yourself on the back. You're doing a great job, man. Hang in there. You see, there's a large class of people that are growing every day. It's not first class, not second class. It's the average class. And this has to be the season where you focus on being productive instead of being busy. So many of us as so-called believers, this is is why you don't have the energy, you don't have the fuel, you don't have the willpower because you're busy and busy people are not productive people and productive people are not busy people. You're so tired you can't sleep and you're too sleepy because you're so tired. It comes from being busy. Productive people are always ready, always prepared, always developing, always growing, always creating, always producing, always result-oriented. I'm talking about gifted for the grind. Now, I'm going to share some keys with you. I'm going to share some keys with you. Key number one, when you're gifted for the grind, you do what average people won't do when you're gifted for the grind you do consistently what average people only do occasionally you do consistently what average people only do occasionally I'm going to repeat that because this is the first principle you do consistently this is why Robin and I, we pray consistently, we serve consistently, we minister consistently, we tithe, we give, we sacrifice consistently because average people only do it occasionally. They only do it conditionally. They only do it temporarily. 
This is why you have so many gaps in your life, so many gaps in your seasons, so many gaps in your, mom, in, in your daily and seasonal movements. And you want to know why? Because you only do it occasionally. You only do it temporarily. You only do it conditionally. You see, people expect, and their people expect an excellent life with 80% of the effort. You got to go beyond the 80 and get to the 100. There is no success in this life with 20% output. There's no progress in this life with 20% output. There's no promotion, advancement, acceleration in this life with 20% output. There's so many people looking at how can I lose weight easy? How can I make money easy? How can I become popular easy? There is no easy way. And if, it, if there were an easy way, everybody would have done it by now. You got to break the grip of a half-hearted spirit. What does, what does God say about this? What does God say about this in the book of Revelation? He says, you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm and you cause me to vomit. You cause me to reject you. He said, I wish you would be rather cold or hot, but not in the middle. When you're gifted for the grind, principle number two. You do not believe in luck. You don't believe in fortune. You're not looking for a chance because you live by choice. Bishop Grant, you're not looking for a chance because you live by choice. When you're gifted for the grind, you're not living life on a gamble. You're living life on a guarantee. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Try me and see. Won't I open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing? It's a guarantee, people. You don't live on a gamble. You don't live on a scheme. You live on a dream. You see, while, while people and the enemy are trying to to destroy you, God is trying to develop you. While people and the enemy are trying to destroy you, God is trying to develop you. So faith always outweighs fate. Faith always outweighs faith. You are, and this is why this has to be a season where you narrow your circle. You cut the corners on your box, on your square. Because the, 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 the stat is true. You are the average. I am the average of the five people we spend our mo the most of our time with. Oh, I, 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 if I want to find out how you got to where you are, all I got to do is look at the five people you spend most of your time with and I know why you're stuck because you were stuck people. I know why you're backwards because you're going backwards with backwards people. I know, I know why, you, why you're in a place called nowhere because you're hanging out with people who are going nowhere. You don't change, listen, you don't change the person you are on the inside without changing the people who you hang around with on the outside. I'm being very intentional and intimate with some of you because there are those of you that want to take people to places where there's no seat for them. I don't know whether you've been in a situation where I have. There's a seat for me, but there's not a seat for them. And I have to say to them, you got, you got to wait outside. <laughs> that's a good I might preach that sermon touch your neighbor and say you got to wait outside <laughs> you better not you better not preach my sermon before I do 
I'm going to preach that. I'm going to preach that. I just got a sermon. You got to wait outside. Here's, here's another principle. And I thank you for your time. People who are gifted for the grind believe in practice. No matter how gifted you are, you understand that you gain strength and stamina and tenacity through practice. Practice does not make you perfect. Practice causes you to become productive. Practice doesn't make you perfect. Practice makes you productive and gifted people. You know, Ecclesiastes 10 and 10 says you have to sharpen your skill. You have to sharpen your gift. You have to sharpen your ability. You will not become the best you can be without being engaged with something or somebody who is better than you are at what you're trying to be better at. Iron sharpens iron. Practice doesn't make perfect. It makes you productive. And stop resisting being around people who are more successful at what you're trying to be successful at. Stop being intimidated by people. And I'm not talking about their materialistic success. I'm talking about spiritual, mental, emotional success. Stop being intimidated by people that God has put in your life to position you in a way that you have a pattern, you have a process, you have a principle that if it works for them, I want to be around millionaires. I want to be around people who handle big money. I want to be around successful individuals. Guess what? Because my season is just around the corner. And I specialize. I really, I really pray and ask God. Put bigger and better, more beautiful people in my life. Because I know you're not through with me yet. I'm talking about being gifted for the grind. And one of the things you got to be careful of is what is called the clause of compromise. See, compromise comes along and tells you, it don't take all that. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to be all that. You ain't got to get up early in the morning. You ain't got to stay up late at night. You ain't got to take that responsibility on. You, you, you deserve a break. You going to hurt yourself. Something going to happen to you. Yes, something going to happen to me. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither in the hearts of men, what God has for me. Yes, something is going to happen to me, and it is going to be so, it is going to be so great. It's going to be so grand. It's going to be so glorious. It's going to be the degree that I'm able to say like David. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Ah! I love it. I love it. I love it. Touch your name and say, you got to wait outside. <laughs> Here, here's another one. Here's another one. Every level, when you're gifted for the grind, you got to be prepared for your potential to be put to test. You got to be prepared for your potential to be put to the test. When you look at Matthew 25, for example, the moment that you show faithfulness, faithfulness always doubles your potential. In Matthew 25, Jesus taught him uh, uh, an amazing principle regarding a man who entrusted his money to three managers. Two of the three doubled his money because of their faithfulness and because of the maxing out or the maxing, the, the, the maximizing of their ability. See, when you're gifted for the grind and your potential is tested, you maximize your ability. You don't marginalize, you maximize. And so many of you right now, God, before the close of this year, wants to maximize your potential. By testing you, by testing your potential, he wants to maximize it. Two out of the three maximize their potential. And the third one even despised, despised the man 
who gave him the money and said, you too demand it. You know why I didn't do nothing with it? Because you, you work people too hard. You asking me to do too much. You want too much out of me. You, you, uh, you, you, God, you, you, you want me to do all of that? You want me to go to church every Sunday? You want me to go to Bible study? You want me to serve in the ministry? You want to do, you want me to do tithes and offerings? And you want me to forgive my enemies? You asking me for too much. And Jesus teaches that he was unfaithful. And the, the, the parable, he was fired and lost the ability that could have given him the anointing to master money. Imagine that, that God is trying to take you to a level of divine mastery by testing your potential to maximize your ability. You see, because God never settles for little because he knows too much about a lot. He never settles for little because he knows too much about a lot. This is why the Bible in the economy of God, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Because God is always looking to maximize your ability when you're gifted for the grind why settle for second place or second best when you've been anointed to be the head and not the tail above and not beneath you're anointed to be in the forefront and not the background boy I am so excited about this time we've shared I hope you've done due diligence because this is good ground, good soil for a great harvest. And I hope that you give tithe and sow to bishoptavisgrant2.org forward slash donations. Cash out, dollar sign, Greater First Church. And you can give mobile 219-267-0940. Listen, you still got time to join us for one of our exciting services, our incredible outreach opportunities, and moments with God that are absolutely unforgettable. I can't wait until I see you again. It's always better when we get together. I love you. Bye bye now.
Yeah!